Welcome. Welcome to our uh, fourth of our five classes in the second course, uh, The Power of the Mind. So today's class we're um, going to be trying to utilise one of our main tools, which is meditation, that starts to train our, 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 our mind and clear all the detritus. And we're going to be open to receiving um, those um, seeds of inspiration. Now obviously, like um, I talk about how there's this natural cycle of the zodiac where we are more likely to be receiving inspiration, particularly around full moons. That's a really good time to open ourselves up in meditation and just be open to um, this vibrational energy from the infinite that doesn't come from our ego, that's not us deciding, oh, I think this would be good for me to do. Because often when we're applying our thinking brain, we're utilizing all the stuff of our conditioning. So you may have certain plans or certain ideas of things that you want to get, get done this year or projects or um, new transitions, things you'd like to end, things you'd like to begin. So there may be already some ideas that are there but I'm going to invite you all just to wipe the slate clean. Imagine, <laughs> imagine that you had no, no, there, was, there, was, there was nothing to do this year. You had no plans. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, you can't ignore the fact that you have children, you have children, uh, you have dogs, you have cats, you might have to make sure that they survive, etc., etc. Um, but we're going to open ourselves up, become this blank sheet, and allow. Um, that um, vibrational energy, which I've kind of tried to draw in this diagram as the downward, downward pointing triangle, and try and receive that. And so this is where we're coming back to our first class where we think about utilizing our abstract mind. So when we're receiving these seeds, it's a bit like um, uh, uh, some of us are sensitive visually, some of us will hear things. Some of us will just have a deep sense of knowingness. It's not like we get crazy, like, psychedelic images going on and a full-blown full, full blown, um, uh, picture story, which some people do. Um, so after we've done our initial meditation, uh, we're going to do a bit of movement. We're going to do meditation. And then I'm going to invite you on the back of your piece of paper just to draw whatever, whatever you've seen, write whatever words you've kind of heard, and then just allow yourself to continue um, without going into your concrete brain, just staying with that abstract side of your mind which you open up in meditation to explore where that dream might spiral out to, where that, 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 uh, that idea that um, uh, maybe you've just caught an edge of it or you've just seen a glimmer of it and just see if you can expand it. Now it may be exactly what you your concrete brain is already currently thinking about, but then that's a good double check. But it may be saying something like, go to Australia now, for example. <laughs> and then that might be very clear signs of books and flights or whatever. Um, <laughs> my ultimate um, purpose of doing what I do is to try and help people to find their purpose. So it might be around our vocation or our purpose in the world. Equally, it might be something a bit more short term um, in the sense of, you know, when you have a problem, sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you've solved it in your sleep somehow. Like this week, I had lost my second child's Wellington boots. And for three days, it was driving me potty that I could not find these Wellington boots. 4 a.m., two, two nights ago, they're in the playground. So I went to the playground and, yeah, they're there. So <clears throat> sometimes we solve these things um, when we're not thinking, when we're just allowing ourselves to be open. So for any problem in your life, any place where you're not sure where to go forward, this is a really good practice to bring in. And then we will be doing um, a yin practice after that to help clear any of the obstacles which may be in the way of you actually being able to um, uh, manifest such a vision or such a dream. 
Um, <clears throat> and they may come from, if you look at the bottom triangle, there may be a practical, physical reason why that can't happen. That may be an emotional, like fear-based obstacle, or equally it might be a mindset. So starting to become aware of where our own internal and biggest blocks are. So um, without further ado, we will we'll begin and we'll begin on our feet today. <clears throat> So just um, coming to bring your feet a nice wide um, footing apart, maybe the toes slightly pigeon toe turning outwards slightly, and just roll up onto your toes and onto your heels. You can even look at your feet to start with. You know, for many of us, we, we go through a whole day without looking at our body. We're all up here. So let's bring everything down. And with your inhale rising up, with your exhale lowering down. Exhale through the mouth. Maybe even closing your eyes. And feeling what it's like to use your legs. When you next come down, spread your toes, open the soles of your feet as wide as you can to the ground, and then allow your five toes to come back down. Root yourself down to the ground by energizing your legs. So engage your thighs, engage your calves. Root down, tuck your tailbone under. Turn your palms out to the front. Shoulders draw up and back. Take a big inhale, exhale through the mouth. Arrive and be here now in your body. And just standing in your strength, in your power, engage your core subtly. Imagine with every inhale you're rising your crown up to the sky, growing yourself taller. And exhale, rooting yourself back down through your feet. And on your next exhale, softly bend your knees. Allow a looser stance. Maybe a slight bending of your knees just to feel your weight. Shoulders dropping down. And on your inhale, draw your palms up. Maybe a foot or so. And on your exhale, your palms turn down. Bend your knees, sink down a little bit. Inhale a little more. Exhale, inhale, a little more, exhale, push down, inhale, reaching right up, exhale, bending your knees, sweeping those arms right up and right down. Make the movement feel good. Imagine you're breathing out to your fingertips. Inhaling fully. Exhaling fully. Two more like this. Like a bird stretching their wings, expanding. And then the next time your hands come down, imagine you're drawing up something you need from the ground, pulling it up so your palms face upwards as you draw your palms up over your heart and turn your hands down, push down. Inhale, sweep your arms up around like a bird again. Now as high as you can, push down through your whole central space, down into the ground, draw up to your heart. Push down. Inhale like a bird. Exhale through the centre line and then up to the heart. Push down to the ground, up through the outside space and to the inside space. 
draw up through your heart and push back down. Three more like that. Working in your own breath, your own time. Filling your whole body up with that prana, with that chi. All the time rooting through your feet. Last one. And the next time you come through the centre channel, hands towards the ground, turn your feet parallel and dangle. So most of your feet will be parallel underneath your hips. If you have a baby in your belly, your feet will be wider with your toes turned out. Interlace your hands and dangle, shaking side to side. Take a big inhale and blubber your lips, make a sigh. <sighs> and bringing your hands to your feet, tapping your feet. Let's come up the outsides of our legs. And then round the groin and down the inside of those legs. And up the front of the feet, the shins, the knees, the thighs. Yeah. And then standing up a little straighter, bring your uh, fists to your bottom. All around the bottom. And the lower back. Just breathing away anything that doesn't feel right. At the sides of the body. The lower lungs. And up the breastbone into the upper lungs. And then massaging your shoulders. One hand over to the other side of the shoulder. And the other side. Back to the first side and down the arm. And the other side. And massage your palms. Both palms. And then down each one of those fingers, the thumb, index, middle, ring, little, over to the other side. Rub your hands together, placing your hands onto your eyes, rooting through your feet, feeling how your whole body feels. Just a little massage from the inside of your eyebrows to the outside, massaging your temples. <sighs> Down to your jaw, releasing that jaw, releasing your cheeks, and squishy faces, and into that those corner of the noses, and a bit just underneath your nose, and then just sweeping across your face for a final scalp massage, just with your really good shake like you're drying your hair with a towel. And then shake your arms, check your legs, whether you want to do them one at a time, or whether you just want to kind of go a bit crazy. Show oh. you. Uh, grab a bolster or a block and come to sitting down. Whatever comfortable seated position feels good for you. Sitting up nice and tall. Palms receiving, so as to bring our thumb and our first finger together with the other three fingers open. Drawing your shoulders up and back. Feeling that heart expanding, rooting down through your spine, through your sits bones, rooting into the earth beneath you. 
On your inhale, drink up nourishment from that earth. Expand and open to the ether above you. And exhale back down. And just watch your breath. Sitting in the calmness and stillness of your center, of that peace that is always there, in that place within which you can be the observer. You can watch the stories and let them go. Keep rooting with your exhale and aspiring upwards, opening up at that crown, receiving that light from above. And with every breath, feel yourself deeper rooted. You can only reach up as high as you root down. And don't be impatient. For those of us who naturally feel a draw to serve humanity in some way, there sometimes is an impatience to know. Try and let go of all impatience. Maybe today is not the day you know. But keep doing your work, keep doing your clearance, keep, keep your mind clear. Train this apparatus so that it can receive. And as you come into your heart, bring all your awareness into your center, into this place of peace at your heart center that is reflected above in the aspect of our soul, where we feel, where we where we, where we love, where we forgive. And feeling that love in your heart and expand that love through your whole being. And it's like your heart is like extensions, it extends through your arms. And imagining that your heart is expanding through your arms to reach out to others. No one is ever fully alone. We are all like one family. Feel that connection through your roots and through your heart. And as you turn your awareness now to your third eye, the point within which the two sides of ourselves unite and expand upwards through our crown so that we can see and so that we can know feeling the lightness at our crown center as we open up to a, this bright light above us. And within that white light, hold yourself open, Not questioning, not looking for anything, just open and feel the light and feel the space. There is no limits here. Anything is possible. And in that space, 
asking your higher mind what purpose I have this year. Where am I needed? Maybe it's a what must I do? How must I live my life differently? How can I be more true to myself? Whatever question works for you. And allow yourself to receive the answer. Ask any other questions for clarification or follow any images wherever they seem to take you. And come into your breath. Is there anything else that you need to know right now? Is there any problems that you need to solve? Can you lay them out and be open to any solution? And just sit with that and breathe. And draw everything that you've received into your heart. Any word, any image, any explicit direction, whatever that may be. And see if it feels right doing that particular thing or living in that particular way. How does that make you feel? And if it feels good, if it feels right, if your voice of conscience, conscience is saying, yeah, yeah, I've been telling you for ages. Then you got it. And then bringing that feeling that desire of how or what we do in our lives down to our roots. How can these be manifested? Can I plant these seeds? Can I nourish them? What weeds do I need to take away? What patterns do I need to address? What parts of my lives do I need to cut out or change or reinvent? And as I draw that full channel from crown through heart into that earth through the base of our body, keep clear in your channel, try not to look around too much if you can reach for your pen and your paper, turn onto the blank side 
and just allow yourself to either draw what you saw or start writing what you heard or any other way that you um, express. Some of us are visual, some of us are literal. Don't engage too much with thinking about things, just um, start to write or start to draw. And if you're really stuck, you can even just switch to your non-dominant hand, so the hand you don't normally write with, and just allow yourself to doodle. What are you being guided to create in your life at this time? When you feel that you've finished or that you're almost trying as opposed to allowing, just come back into a seated position, maybe cross your legs the opposite way if you had them crossed. And then with your palms turned down now to connect you downwards, thumb and first finger still together. Just dropping your chin to your chest, stretching the back of your neck. Fully exhale, and then inhale, lifting your chin up. Exhale, chin back down. Eye gaze inwards and upwards. Inhaling, chin up. Exhale, chin down. Tongue in the root, root of your mouth, in the, sorry, in the bridge of your mouth. Back to neutral. Left ear to left shoulder. Inhale, exhale, back to center. Right ear to right shoulder. Inhale. And exhale. In your own time. Left ear to left shoulder. And back to center. Just allowing that seed to sink in. 
allowing any tension in that neck. Maybe take a few swallows, come back to neutral. And with the chin to the chest, just the half circles rolling the head from one side to the other. So once we've seen an idea, once we've thought about something and created a thought form around that seed of inspiration, the next thing we do with it is, is maybe talk about it, communicate it. Have we mastered the art of um, clear communication? Particularly with those people who are closest to us, actually. They're the biggest challenge. Can we really speak to them, you know, those you know, intimate people in our lives? Actually, what we want to do with our lives? Back to centre. Take a big inhale, releasing your soles of the feet together. You're sitting on that block or that bolster up to you, or just the floor. Taking a few cat cows, so drawing your chest through, and then exhale, rounding. Make sure there's a big gap in between your heels and your groin. And bring an ujjayi breath into your throat. Are you scared of being heard? Are you scared of expressing your truth or actually what you want to do because you want to please other people? If we all went around pleasing other people, there'd be no change. There'd be no catalyst for uh, changing those things in our society, in our, in our world that actually are old. Old beliefs and need to be cast away to make way for the new. Last two like this. And then we're going to come into either just a regular butterfly by dropping our head towards our toes. We can use that block, whichever way we want to, to support our head. Or for those of you who are licking your toes, you can bring your hands underneath your shins and just bring your hands on top of your feet. It depends on your lower back and your hips. And if your knees are very high and your hips are very um, tense, you can put bolsters or blocks into the edges of your thighs. And wherever you are in this pose, see if you can soften your breath. See if you can allow the exhale to allow a little bit more melting. And wherever you're feeling that tension, whether it's in your hip or in your pelvis, or in your lower back, middle back, upper back, neck, see if you can soften with that exhale. Softening your shoulders, softening your fingertips, softening those places that shouldn't actually be working, but we, we like to make them work. It's like we want things to be busy. And wherever you're trying to prevent yourself from feeling, again, soften. Are you pushing yourself into pain or are you just unwilling to feel? Unwilling to know if there's something that actually you need to address, even if it's just as simple as, okay, actually, I do actually need to get a massage proper physical massage. My body's been calling out to me, but I've been ignoring it. Maybe our health is, is good, but actually to realize everything we want to do, we need full health, full vital energy. So how else can we go about that? What are the things that are taking away our energy? What are those things in our lives that zap it, whether it's tr travel, whether it's too much coffee, whether it's people, toxic relationships. Patterns, our routine. 
Why do you have to do that every day? Why do you have to do that every week? What would it feel like to do things differently? That job, that hobby, that voluntary work that started off as something compassionate and now has turned into some obligation that we feel heavy about the idea of going and doing. Maybe our form of service, our charity work has changed. Maybe we need to redirect that time to something else, something new. Last minute here, see if you can soften, see if you can stay in your place of peace. Watching your breath and allowing everything else to fall away. Here as we go into the lower back, we start to look into our fear body. You know, how much do we do out of fear? Fear that we might not do it right, or fear that other people might judge us. Fear that, you know, we might get hurt, we might lose our house, we might, etc, etc. Things might change, you know, frightened of change. Sometimes change is good. A bit of clearance, a bit of Kali, Shiva, a bit of, you know, fire before actually new seeds can germinate, before a new landscape in our life is created. Last three breaths here. One. Take a big inhale, exhale, walking yourself up. Extending your leg out, just give them a little flap. Shaking them. So two variations here. It's best to sit on a bolster or a block for this one. Let's bring our, um, our mirror use, so let's bring our right leg, foreleg across the, the mat at 90 degrees, so, and then bringing your um, left leg across, so you're trying to get this left foot even up towards where the knee is, that for most of us isn't going to happen, this isn't just a cross-legged, this is, in theory this is a double pigeon, this is one of those poses that I don't like to teach because I don't actually like it. <laughs> this is a good pose for us today as we're challenging obstacles. If you want to bring a block and put it in between your um, top leg and your foot so that it stays there. So that foot isn't coming into our groin, it's more across, it's more uh, in a line with our knee. Even if it doesn't get to our knee, it could be in the crease of that, um, that calf. So that block might fall away in a minute, but we're going to start with just a simple, small forward fold. So take a big inhale, and then exhale, see what happens when you start to lean forward. Now you might need another block in front of you to bring your fingertips onto. And what's naturally going to happen here is you're going to want to tense because this is not where you want to be. You'd much rather be in a coffee shop right now, having a nice chat and a hot chocolate. But anyway, you're here, so <laughs> let's see what you've got. As we start to really get into um, uh, uh, some emotional anger, maybe it's in our hip, maybe it's in our limitations that we're feeling. Remember what we learned or we were, we were working on last week is we have to render ourselves neutral. We have to clear all this fear, clear all this anger so that we can be a continuous channel to receiving this um, insight and intuitive um, voice. So just see what happens with another exhale. See if you can mount into the pose a little more. <sighs> See if you can not be tense here. See if you can relax. So we're just going to do one minute in this particular forward fold. 
So in our physical body, remember our physical body is a reflection of our etheric body, our etheric body being our energetic body, that which correlates through our chakras, through all the planes of our existence. So anything that's actually going on in our everyday life, our practical life, in our, and through up to our spiritual life, is embodied and put into our physical body. So where you're feeling that tension, breathe. Breathe space. Exhale, let go of that obstacle. Let go of that thing that's blocking you. That's stopping you from enjoying even the most awkward position in your life, you know? Last five breaths. Last one. <sighs> now we're gonna walk ourselves back up to sitting, keep the legs exactly where they are. So if your left knee is on the top, take your right arm, and that's going to go under, we're going to cross our arms, so our right arm is under, our left arm is on top. We're going to wrap the arms around each other. So first position is just simply sitting up here like this. Second position we can start to lean forwards. Whichever feels better for you, for getting into that tight space in your shoulders and your arms. So remember the thing that's going on in your shoulders, your heart space is restricting your, um, the flow of love in and out. We have to be allowing of love to flow in so that we can be allowing of love to flow out without us getting caught up in the whole process, that we become just like an electron, moving energy from one to another place. Half a minute more. Breathing right into that deepest uncomfortable space. Into whatever emotional blockage is stopping you from doing these things that actually fill you with passion, fill you with this um, love to be part of everything. One more breath, inhaling, exhaling, or sitting up straight, inhale, open your arms up. Release your wrists, release your fingers. And then take any movement that your arms need. Interlace the fingers, push the arms up. Draw the shoulders away from your ears. Look up, inhale, exhale, chin back down. Inhale, exhale. One more. Releasing one more time your fingers, your wrists, moving away that prop. We're going to take that top foot, so that left foot, to the outside of our right knee. So some of you will need that prop underneath your bottom, others of you will find it easier without it. We're going to hug onto that left leg with our right arm to twist ourselves round. And we're placing the left hand down along the spine of our back. Inhaling, lifting up and exhale, twisting around. Some of you may be able to extend your right arm out to uh, facilitate the twist. Some of you may even bind. And then just breathe here for five breaths. And exhale. 
two more. And back to center. You haven't completely finished with the hips here. So you're going to keep your right knee at the front. We're going to take this left leg and swing it all the way around. Coming into pigeon pose. So in pigeon pose, if you have a knee problem, there's a variation where you can go onto your back. Otherwise, just make sure your hips are level. Some of us do need a block underneath our, our right hip. Otherwise, we're walking down towards the ground, whether we need a prop um, for our forehead, or whether we're resting our head onto our palms of our hands, our back, uh, backs of our hands, sorry. And now softening the sacrum, see if again on that exhale, you can allow that melting to happen. <coughs> You can allow any stagnant or stale emotions just to flow away. I'm not good enough. Any mental thoughts of disbelief that you, you could do, you could retrain to do X, Y, and Z. You could move your whole family somewhere else. You could change your job. You could get rid of that relationship, friendship or intimate or other. Or maybe it's simply changing your attitude to what you already have. Maybe you already have everything that you need and you're perfectly placed at the moment to do everything that you are needed to do. But you're still looking to a part of yourself of the past that for some reason you don't want to let go of. With every exhale softening, allowing that melting to happen. Breathing into our pelvis, breathing into our hips. Letting everything be, letting everything that you've learned about yourself already this morning sink in. Maybe you can take away as many props, or maybe you find your head comes to the ground more naturally now. Watching your breath whenever your mind distracts yourself. Whenever your monkey mind becomes filled with that chitter chatter. The story, the he said, she said. The pattern, whether it's self blame or blaming others. Can we take a little more responsibility for our, our lives? Can we be a little more focused about what we're doing with them? Can we be a little bit more effective at helping the whole, the whole of our world create a better world? There's enough negativity out there, you know? We'd wage a war on negativity. Last three breaths. Finding space. <sighs> the other side you choose, last one. You're walking yourself up to sitting, swinging that back leg around. Extend both legs out just for a moment in front of you and just see what's going to happen to your legs. 
They okay? They still there? Yeah, just, just even things out a little bit. Although it's impossible to go back to where we started. So bringing our left foreleg across the mat. Again, you might need a bolster to sit up. Make sure you have a block or two blocks accessible before you bring that right leg across the top. So again, you know, in theory, your ankle is actually on top of that knee. Or, or perhaps into the um, crease of that calf if the hips are just not playing game. And each side of our body is very different, so, you know, don't judge it. Don't tell it bad words. And you can have that second block, whether you'd like to support yourself. There's three sides of a block, so you can work out which height is better for you. And as you inhale, lengthen your spine and see if you can hinge at your hips and fold forwards. Closing your eyes, eye gaze inwards and upwards to that third eye. And notice immediately you're clenching. You're clenching that hip, you're clenching your jaw, you're clenching your shoulders. You want to do anything but feel the fact you've got tight hips. You know, I don't really care whether I have tight hips or whether you have tight hips. But what's going on behind it? You know, what's the, what's the physical pattern that gives you those tight hips? Do you need to bring more movement into your everyday life? You know, if you are an over-exerciser or exerciser, do you need to bring in more flexibility into your practice? And if that tension is coming from an emotional source, you know, what is it that you're suppressing? What is it you keep holding in, you keep pushing down? Do you need to just have a rant to a close friend just to get it off your chest, to get it out? I'm not saying we all need to go to therapists, although in our ways we all do. We all need our own form of therapy, whether it's walking, whether it's yoga, whether it's dancing, whether it's screaming into the night sky, howling at the moon, whether it's running it off in a non-addictive kind of way. Yeah, you know. And again, use your breath, soften. Where are you tensing? Where are you clenching? What don't you want to feel? What don't you want to know? What don't you want to see? If there's anything you are scared of seeing in yourself, it's definitely something that needs to be cleared. Whether you need to go through the whole psychoanalysis or whether you just need to breathe and let it go. Move on from the past. Be in the present and have the vision of the future. And maybe you fold forward a little more, and maybe you don't. Maybe you need to back off. Maybe you're clenching in your bottom. Try and soften with your exhale. Last five breaths here. See if you can let go a little more. See if you can allow things to start flowing again. And when they start flowing etherically in our energetic body, things start flowing in our physical body and in our, our practical reality. Maybe we are resistant to developing new relationships, new friendships. Maybe we're scared of being intimate with someone else. We don't want them to fully see who we are. 
We're scared of seeing who we are really are ourselves. Into me, I see intimacy. Last breath here. And then gently walking your fingertips up, coming to sitting. Now this time it's the other way around. So we're gonna bring our left arm under, our right arm over, crossing our arms. And even if the hands don't go palm to palm, they can go back to back and hook fingers. Lifting the elbows up to heart height. And just breathing here for five breaths before choosing whether you fold forwards or do you stay here? Eye gaze inwards and upwards, and if it's all too much, just cross your arms and hold your tops of your shoulders. Soften your face. Breathing into the back of your heart, allowing yourself to be connected into that um, grid of love, that connection to every, every other being on this planet. Wherever that tension builds, consciously bring your mind and then soften through your breath to bring the changes down into the physical. Last three breaths in this position. And then sitting up, if you fold it forwards, open up those arms, wiggle those fingers, release the wrists, release the elbows. Inhale, hands up above your head, interlace the way you don't want to. Push the palms up, inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale. Releasing wrists, fingers, elbows once more. Moving away props to the side. Keeping that left knee at the front of the mat. We're going to swing the right leg round. So your foreleg is across the mat, going anywhere from your groin up towards being parallel with the front of your mat. So just see what is the right angle for you. If your hips feel wonky, then use that block underneath your left hip bone. Otherwise, we're walking down either onto our elbows, maybe to make a pillow. If you've got a nice plump pillow or a, um, a bolster, you can even use the bolster. Or your forehead resting on a block or on your or palms and hands. Whatever works for you. And again, we're going back into our, 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 our hips. Those kind of black holes for holding on to things. Those lower desires that keep us in these loop of, uh, of an ego cycle, of an ego pattern.
watching your breath, feel how your breath feels as you bring it into your body. And with your mind, utilizing and working with your breath creates space in those places of density. And let them go with the exhale. Create that space. <sighs> nice breaths for one more minute. Exhale, softening. Letting go. Being that channel. When you feel distracted, keep coming back to our visualization that we did at the very start. You know, creating those roots down into the earth, creating that connection upwards through our heart, expanding out through our branches, outwards and upwards. As we're open to being guided, to seeing more clearly, to understanding what we need to change physically and practically, what we need to work on emotionally and mentally. Last five breaths here, soften, create that space to really know yourself, to know your path. To thank yourself for all you have, for all you've done, all that you will do. Last breath in this pose, inhale. Oh, exhale, looking yourself up. Swinging us, uh, both our legs round. And again, reconnect with what's going on in our hips and our legs. Maybe a little tap if any of them have gone to sleep or a little rub. So it's up to you whether you want to, t want to change so that you're on the width of your mat. It, depends, it kind of depends how wide your legs are open. You want to open the legs as wide as they want to open. So you can turn sideways if you want to have your heels still on a mat. But if your legs don't open too wide, then it doesn't really matter. <laughs> So grab your bolster or your block. I'm just placing it in front of you. Coming forwards, maybe onto your elbows, maybe onto your hands. Depends how um, flexible you are this way. And see if you can make a little pillow for your head, whether it's on the, uh, the block turned flat or the block turned on its side, or you've grabbed and reached random things that you can find around yourself. You know, remember it's not about having your 
nipples on the ground here. It's about sitting in your own shit, really. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh yeah, here we go. This easy pose that isn't not easy. And then take a big inhale and exhale. You know, it's not about the, the nice Instagram photos that we can make of ourselves in these crazy poses. It's about the quality within which we live our life. And softening your feet, your ankles, your calves, allowing your knees and thighs and the hips to soften. Being present to whatever's going on in your lower back, softening your middle back and your sides, and your shoulders and your upper back, your upper spine. There's lots of things we perceive we can't do in the world, you know, we're not good enough, we don't have those skills. But when we create teams, we can do anything, you know, when we work with other people who have those skills, we might simply be the visionary, we might simply be the leader. Or equally, we might be the technician within it, we may have those skills. <coughs> We may be naturally gifted in a particular field and bring that to any given team, any given project. And if we're receiving, if we're receiving this inspiration, often it's not simply involving ourselves, often we need to go out and find those people who have those skills and those qualities that we don't have. And instead of feeling bad that we don't have them, we focus on our strengths. We focus on oh, what we can bring and we work with other people that complement us. And that's where real magic, that's where real alchemy happens. We have our own individual process to go on. We have our, um, our intimate relationships, which also alchemic, al is an alchemical reaction between the two polarities of those in, in, within that relationship. And then we have our reaction within the world, within the groups that we work within to change the reality of the outer space of, of, of the world that we collectively live in. And in theory, these are manifested in organizations, organizations having the same type of structure as us. They have a physical reality. They have a collective emotions. They have particular mindsets, particular beliefs, you know, you just have to look at a mission statement of any um, organization to see that. They take effect in the world. And what happens in the world nowadays is actually a product of that which is manifested through organizations, through the work of people working together. So can we shift the focus from all this short-term gain to collective gain? from individual um, benefit to collective benefit. How can we form and make groups which, which spread those seeds, which create that world in which you can see that you would like to live in? Last five breaths here, see if you can walk your hands further forwards. See if you can relax your shoulders a little more. Maybe you're shifting onto your sits bones. Uh, sorry, your um, pubic bones a little more. Last one. And then walking your hands up. Just sitting up nice and tall, I'm going to take a, a, a stretch over to our right hand side, reaching that left arm up and over, looking up, twisting up to the sky, 
Big three big breaths here, keeping that elbow upwards. Your hand can either support yourself or you can even bring your thumb and your first finger together in chin mudra. One more. Inhaling, coming over to the other side. Whether you support your head, whether you have your hand on the ground or whether you have your hand in chin mudra, just reaching up as now that right arm comes up, opening the chest. <coughs> Nice deep breaths. One more. And inhale, come into sit up again. Come into look forwards on your mat, throw your feet, and bring your soles of your feet onto the ground. So for most of you, your feet will be hip width apart. I have something in the way, so my feet are wider. And we're going to rest our head towards our knees or we're simply leaning forwards. Just take yourself into this little egg. Roll this way, just releasing the back. Eyes turn inwards and outwards. So bringing our, 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 our legs in to cross our legs to roll onto our knees and bringing the soles of our feet under our bottom with our knees out wide. You can use that block with the, the, the bolster, with the blocks on me, we're just using, just behind ourselves. We are either just going to lie um, on top of them or lean into our hands. Only drop your neck if your neck feels good, or lower yourself down so that those blocks are underneath your back and your head is off, your head is off the, um, the block onto the bolster and the arms are out to the sides. <clears throat> Obviously if you're more flexible you don't need the blocks, you can just have the bolsters. Don't push it with your knees, your knees are very delicate. And whichever variation you're in, whether you're simply leaning back, try and focus on what your heart, what's happening in your chest and your heart. This connection we have to our heart space, so important when we want to tap into that intuitive power, our abstract mind, we start to want to receive those seeds of inspiration, to be able to draw them down, to coat them in that magnetic force of the soul, to create thought forms with them in our, our, our concrete mind. So then bring them down into an emotional desire to make something happen and finally to manifest it in reality, in our lives and in the world. If you're leaning on your hands, you might want to walk yourself forward and just give yourself a little break and then come back in for the last minute or so. Otherwise, just stay reclining with your eye gaze inwards and upwards, with your breath coming up to your heart and out through your arms.
observe any tingling sensations, which may be an indication of certain lines of energy flow opening up. Rebalancing us from inside out. Not by force, not by demanding, not by some kind of ego idea of what we should do, just by an allowing, by a softening, by an accepting. Last five breaths, or three depending on your breath length. And then gently bring your hands underneath your shoulders. And just coming forwards into a child, bringing a block or two blocks for your forehead forwards. Inwards and upwards with your eye gaze. Shoulders relax, hands, fingers soft. And in this less exposed position, feeling all that you have within, feeling that peace, that space you always have. That infinite nature. All the way down to your finite nature, your physical. And that's the only part of yourself that will truly end, that, will, that truly dies in this lifetime, but all the atoms go on to make new form. All of the rest of you is, it a, is beyond death, is always alive, it's always there. It's limitless. And then without uh, making too much fuss, coming up and moving your feet to one side. Of course, put on any jumpers, any um, socks that you need whilst you're sitting up. Before coming down onto our backs. And do a twist either side before reclining in Shavasana, but do have your blanket close. So just onto our backs, rocking side to side on that sacrum. And just allow your knees to drop to the left as you open your right arm to the right. Take three to five breaths on one side. Before bringing the knees up and across to the other side. And when you feel even, coming back to centre. Extending your legs with or without a bolster and your knees, your choice. with your blankets, with your eye pillows as you choose. Extend your legs, extend your arms, stretch them, tense them, tense and stretch, 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 tense and, stretch, tense and, stretch, tense and, stretch and release. Let's do that one more time, this time with the breath. Inhale, tense and stretch, tense and stretch, hold that breath at the top. And release. Take a final big inhale, a final big exhale without tensing, just allowing the breath to be full and free. Let your back 
be supported by the ground. Let your palms be facing up to the sky. Let yourself be held. And allow everything that's going on in your body just to settle. As you allow your toes to settle and soften, the soles of your feet softening, opening. Your ankles free, relax. Your shins and your calves being held on the ground. Your knees relaxed, your thighs melting. The back of your body and your bottom completely soft, relaxed, held. The backs of your shoulders soft, backs of the arms, forearms, palms, backs of the hands, fingertips. Open, soft, receiving. Back of that neck, long, soft, relaxed. Jaw softens, tongue in the mouth, relaxed. Back of that head, held. Crown of your head, open, receiving. Third eye open. Tongue into the roof of the mouth. Throat soft, maybe a slight swallowing action to release. Chest open, soft. Heart receiving at peace. Lungs, chest, like the ocean waves. Abdomen and all your organs relaxed, at ease. Belly down to your pelvis, through all of your digestive organs, reproductive organs, soft, relaxed. Replenishing, plugging back in, down through our legs, down through our tailbone into the earth. And down as far as you can imagine into that earth, grow your roots. And with your inhale, draw up nourishment, draw up strength. Fill your body with the good stuff, with love, with peace, with joy, with wonder. Up through your heart, through the crown of your head, opening up your branches into the ether, receiving the light that you need, the guidance you need, the inspiration that you need at this time. And into that ether, into that space, allow yourself to be.
And wherever you find yourself drifting, draw yourself back into your heart space, into this place of peace. Everything's gonna be okay. There is enough time, there is enough space. There are enough resources. You do know enough. And feel that breathing heart expanding and contracting. Bringing everything down deeper, down through your core, down to your legs, down through the tip of your tailbone. Coming back down to the center of the earth and your imagination. And then to the sensation of your body on the ground. Feeling its weight, feeling its shape, feeling the sensations of breathing within it. Taking a slightly bigger breath and just feeling the movement. <sighs> Bringing the movement down into your toes as you wiggle your toes. And to your fingers. Bringing yourself into the back, into this place, into this time. And seeing that vision that you saw at the start clearly in your mind. Bringing your breath down through your chest, into your palms, into your fingers as you wiggle your fingers. Still with your vision and mind stretching through your legs and stretching through your arms. And then rolling onto one side. Giving yourself a little hug, thanking yourself. For coming and giving yourself this time. And when you're ready, coming to sitting. Take your time. In a comfortable seated position, bring your right and left palm together in Anjali Mudra or prayer gesture. With the fingers pointing up. Just breathing into the centre of the palms. And from the centre of the palms into your heart. It's like this mudra acts like the steeple of a church draws down that light and into your heart as the edges of your thumbs press your breastbone or toward your breastbone. As 
setting our intention to keep that channel through the day, to listen to the voice of our conscience or voice of our soul, listen for the direction from within, the, the path that we know we need to take, and sounding on or listening to seal our practice, taking an inhale and exhale. And inhale for on. Oh. Namaste, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks very much, everyone. The only homework that there is this week is, um, you probably have done it already today, but if you haven't, just to really hone in on what you think, what the two questions are, so what you, you feel you're being guided to create and what you feel are the obstacles, because that will tie into what we're going to do next week. That's it. Thanks.